Welcome everybody to another episode of Awesome People. This is Iman and I hope you've been enjoying your Wednesday night. As always, I hope you're social distancing. As always, I hope you're taking care of your loved ones. As always, I hope you're being kind, respectful, and loving to all those around you. Um, tonight, we have a special guest and you know we've had a lot of people so far that many of you have known. And this next guest is somebody that I know very well, but you might not know very well. And that little segment that you just saw was my nephew, Parsa Afshar Javan. That video clip was from 16 years ago when I took my niece, Dorsa, and my nephew to Dave and Buster's. I had my little sharp view cam. I was filming and acting like paparazzi and doing interviews, and I was asking them, what do you want to do or be when you grow up? And the answer was, um, the answer was, let's just go ahead and play it right now, actually, because apparently the video wasn't played. So before I introduce Parsa, I want you guys to watch this clip right now of what Parsa said 16 years ago. I really don't know what I want to be when I grow up. You want to be a Power Ranger? I could answer that. No. You really don't know yet? Okay. I want to be an art. I want to like draw stuff. <laughs> really? You want to be an artist? Yeah. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, how many people can say that when they were eight years old, somebody asked them, what are you gonna be when you're gonna grow up? But what do you wanna be? And the words that come out of the mouth is actually what ends up being. So here we are, man. Paris, what's going on, dog? <laughs> <laughs> what's going down? Oh, oh man, it's so great. Hey, man, first of all, let's cheers. Let's cheers to this. This is gonna be an awesome interview. Cheers. I, it's, it's kind of hard to call it an interview because this is my homie. First of all, I want to say I'm extremely grateful to have a wonderful, wonderful relationship with my niece and nephew. And um, it's just fun to just have this little chit chat with you, Pars. Um, I want to basically just kind of um, start off with reading what you have on your website as your bio, okay? Because I'm not going to do the regular bullshit conversation. We know each other very well. What I really want to happen is to dig deeper today. And I also want people who don't know you to get a little better sense of who Pars is because you're, you're kind of an enigma. You know, and, I, and I'm going to blow up your spot here just a little bit. And um, on your website, I thought it was very intriguing, and I, and I definitely want to get your take on this. Uh, in the bio, you call it me, me, me. And, you know, it, and actually, you, you guys can all go to it as sinoart.com, S-E-E-N-O-A-R-T.com. And, you know, because I was going to give, like, this whole bio of who Parsa is, what does he do? And I was like, you know what, let me go to his website. Let me see what he has. And I really love what he has. And I remember I had seen this a little while back. This is his bio. This is Parsa's bio, who's an artist, a multifaceted creator. He says, this is usually the place where artists write something entirely inauthentic about themselves, feeding into the ego. And he goes on, he says, my name is Parsa Afshar Javan. I'm a Persian American. They say you can learn a lot about someone by knowing what area of their body they wash first while bathing. The area of my body that I wash first is my chest. Half of my left central incisor is synthetic. Fourth grade jump rope accident. I had issues with bedwetting until the sixth grade. My first heartbreak was at age 16. I have attempted and lost a brother to suicide. I have ascended from earth into the sky and descended into new lands. I have seen death. I have made love. I am a ball of light trapped in this vessel, having a human experience. I accept that this is only temporary. And that is Parsa Afshar Javan. And um, Pars, I, I, I really just want to, you know, just start off and, and ask you, when, when I read back that bio, um, what, what stands out? Like, what, what is it that you were trying to convey when you had this on the bio of your website? I uh, just, uh, honestly, that was a great intro. Thank you for that. Let me start off with that. And th thank, you for, thank you for having me on the, on <laughs> I love the show you. tonight and having me involved. <laughs> Of course. Uh, love to support, but the what I take where what what really stood out from that, uh, or what I wanted to do, I guess my intention with that was uh, not to really feed into the into the standard of what to expect on an about me page when you go on somebody's profile or somebody's uh, website. You know, you're you're expecting to see like what what this you know what what the journey was or what um, what they represent or what the brand is trying to uh, push or the message, you know, 
but I feel like that's not what was important, you know, to show. Uh, I wanted to show aspects of me abilities, and I wanted to, I want to put my myself out there, uh, you know, off the bat and show my strengths in that, and and pretty much communicate that with myself too. So that was my my initial. How 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 hard, if at all, was it for you to do that? Because I know you put that up a couple of years ago. Um, were you like, was it like a little struggle or from the very beginning, like that, oh, fuck that shit. I'm just going to put this thing up and it is mm -hmm. what it is. Like, how was it? No, I was, it was actually kind of funny. I remember like kind of laughing when I was doing it because it was more of like a, a stream of consciousness, which is usually how I write, uh, most quote unquote poems or anything that like, I put up or whatever. If it's not a structured thought, it's a stream of consciousness of just words and ideas and memories and observations that just come down that make sense either they rhyme or not rhyme or they, they make sense but sometimes they don't make sense in the moment even sometimes they don't make sense but you know you go back to it and you re reflect on it and you have some aha moments uh so that's that's mm -hmm. that i i feel like it was it was a very effortless um process to to do that page why do you think that so many people or society in general uh, live in this inauthentic, as you call it, type of world? Like, what do you think is the reason? And do you have any kind of like well, well, recommendation? I'll, no, I'll, I'll answer that immediately. I think it goes back to normalcy, you know, appearing normal in other people's minds, in that image that they hold of you, you know, like to go. Through that job, get to get uh, your your you know uh, to you know buy your first home or to get the you know all these different things. Um, the standard, the standard, the standard the expectations. expectations that we play on ourselves and that we want to see in, in ourselves or that's being ingrained in our minds of of what is. Uh, so naturally, it's that the, the, rebel, the rebellion against that. So, like, do you do you remember a point in time or like a, a catalyst? Uh, when you were growing up, where you were like, man, seriously, like, I'm just going to do me. And I'm going to put out my full authentic self and um, basically just get out of my comfort zone. I'm going to put it out there because I don't think people um, innately are as authentic as you became. It, was there a turning point? Um, yeah, there was a turning point. Uh, I To answer your question, you... You asked, like, when was the last time, you know, I, I think the last time that I was truly authentic like that was actually in that video that you captured mm. uh, of, me, wow. of me saying that, you know, because uh, at some point from that moment to now, I lost myself, you know, mm. and I'm still in the process of losing and finding myself every single day. Uh, but in that period of time, you know, I was eight years old. So I, after that you become nine like i went through like the skateboarding phase i went through uh the airsoft phase i went through all these different phases all these different attractions or activities or things that you would uh, hold yourself to or attract yourself to and mainly that goes back to like uh, the people in your surroundings too like your environment shapes you um so like me you know trying to to the youth football league in rockville because all my friends were doing it uh you know, I, I love the sport, you know, but I'm, obviously I'm not a field guy like that. I, I'm not doing that. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's just like different things that I try to experiment with or try to be a part of mainly because of the mass was doing it. A consumer, you know, I was conforming to it. You know, I was I was that guy wearing the polo shirts with the white t-shirt underneath, you know, wearing the, the Sperry. Oh, I remember, I remember your preppy face, Yeah, the, the, the Sperry's, you know, like we we all did that, you know. North, North Potomac, Maryland style, you of know. Of course, yeah, but, uh, but when I refound my voice was when I regained this, uh, this, you know, calling and attraction to creation and drawing and stuff like that. I remember way younger uh, around like being that, you know, uh, seven or six, seven, eight-year-old. Kid, I was drawing a lot of uh, dragons, like different, like mythical creatures with wings and claws and stuff like that. But on the other end, I was also sketching cars too. 
uh, like kind of creating my own image of a vehicle or something like that. And yeah, I, rem I remember your car drawings. You were on a phase where you were like so certain that you're going to be a car designer. Yeah, that was, far, like, and that was the first profession <laughs> that I can remember that I wanted to really be. Even I yeah. feel like before I said an artist, um, but that's how it turned out. But how it came back was uh, through necessity, um, not of an interest of dragons and cars, but uh, because I, I had to like kind of release what was going on uh, internally and express it in a different manner and uh, approach. And I'm going to get into that, but what I do want to ask you right now is when you watch that video of when you were eight years old, what's the first thing that comes to mind? <laughs> the first thing that comes, I mean, a lot of things come to mind. Um, the, the first thing that came to my mind when I first, when I first watched it was... You were so cute. <laughs> no, not even that. was just like, whoa. Like, mo mostly um, on your end. You know, appreciative on your end of like, wow, this guy, like, he did that. You know, like, you actually took your niece and nephew, Dave and Busters, and, like, you played that card and you did that to express that and really bring that out of their own minds. You know, me and Dorsa, uh, out of yeah. our own minds. Like, you, I, don't, I don't think that really happens, especially nowadays. Like, I feel like uh, young adults and like you, when you did that, I think you're almost my age and maybe a little bit, uh, uh, probably a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I was, older. yeah, actually, oh my God, I was your age, 23, 24, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like for me, I, that's like, that would go beyond me right now, you know? So the fact that you did that and it was just beautiful. Uh, so it was just some, uh, a very nostalgic feeling of like, wow, he really did that and that's cool. Um, but, Another thing was was Dorsa's reaction. <laughs> Dorsa's reaction, which, which, which I, I think I, I yeah. cut out of this one, but I had it earlier on today. But her reaction was like Dorsa's one reaction. Of laughing. It's classic. Yeah, Dorsa's right? reaction was like, Oof, "Artist, oh boy, <laughs> like here we go." But she yeah. thought it was a better chance of you being a Power Ranger than being an artist. Straight up, yeah. <laughs> which hey, um, there's probably no difference. If if there was if there was a word or a, a a sentence or a message that you could give that same parsa from that day in Dave and Buster's to prepare him for for the for the for the life that came afterwards, what would it be to give him encouragement, to give him hope, to be like, hey man, you got this? I didn't say this was man. gonna be easy though. <laughs> no, man, it definitely not. I mean, it's just like I think my my statements or or uh, or I guess words like, of what, yeah, yeah, my words wisdom. of my words of wisdom. I can't really I can't really say exactly what it would be, but I think it would it would kind of revolve around laughter, you know, like, like kind of like make a joke out of it. Like, Hey, don't forget to laugh or like, don't forget to like smile, mm -hmm. you know, like kind of something like that. Nothing too serious, nothing too crazy. Just like a really slight tip yeah. to, to make it a little difference. Like roll with the punches, you know, like yeah. they take, take it easy. Yeah. Don't take life too serious. That kind of stuff. Huh? Yeah. I mean, that's like, exactly. It's one of the, one of the, um, what's it called? Um, uh, I guess rules, you know, not to take anything personally or anything seriously in life. So you ha you ha you talked about a lot of other things. I mean, like, look, the way I look at it is that this one page of your bio is is so indicative of of the persona of Parsa, but there's so much reality behind it, obviously. And um, you know, you went through a lot of stuff through a very young age. Um, the, the bed wedding part is something that a lot of people can relate to. So I'm not even going to talk talk about that part, even though you might have got a little more than. Than most. I don't know, man. But, I think it, yeah, went a little bit older than the most people. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, 12, 12 years is not ideal, but it's not unheard of either. I mean, it's, well, do you, if you want to talk about it, you know, like, feel free. I mean, maybe there's a 12 year old here. What advice do you have for them? I, I think, I think <laughs> it was like a nervous system thing. I'll be honest with you. I mean, you can't, you can't, you, there's no shame in it. Yeah. I remember, I, I so, I have two, two things to say. I mean, regarding this. Yeah. Um, I remember, like like yeah exactly like being like 12 12 years old it's kind of old for for a little bedwetter you know but yeah. <laughs> i remember in the nights i would have a dream 
that in the dream I'm actually going to the bathroom. You know, well, that's but, the worst. That's your mind fucking playing game with you. Exactly. <laughs> so that's uh, how it happened. In my dreams, I would be going to the bathroom in the in an actual bathroom. You know, in with the toilet yeah. and everything. Right. But then you know you'd wake up and you're like, damn. Did it again. Yeah, you done messed up. <laughs> you done messed up. How happy were you when that was a phase that ended? You know, you know what ended that? What? Yeah, I'll be so frank with you. I'll be so honest with you. Um, so there is, you know, there is like in sixth grade and middle school, there is that that like outdoor ed trip that everyone goes to in like yeah, in the public school that. system. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. This is like, cause I didn't do any sleepovers then, you know? So like everything was just like family homes and like stuff like that. So I was thinking to myself, oh my God, I'm going to a place where all my friends are in a bunk, sleeping bags, like, yo, Paris, you gotta step it up. You know, so if something happens, it's- That's so much pressure. I'm sure you didn't over. go to sleep. Huh? No, I went, Did to you even go to sleep? I went to sleep. Oh, okay. I definitely went to sleep. Actually, that was that was a quite a weird trip. That that outdoor ed trip. I don't know if anybody is watching that. Is oh, I hated outdoor, outdoor ed trip, ed. but yeah, uh, yeah, there was some trouble then. Wow, uh, but no, that was the time. That was the time that in my mind it just clicked, and it was like, yo, it's not happening anymore, and. It's over, but well, thank God, thank God, you had the opportunity to like almost turn off that switch. I mean, if you knew that it was that easy, where you could just convince yourself, you would have been like, "God damn it, why could I do this shit in third grade like normal people do?" Dude, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I think. Well, damn, I'm not even gonna go there. No, it's all good, but but don't worry. There's some there's some more stuff. I mean, it's crazy actually. Like the, like the amount of stuff that you went through at such a young age that you know, like you wouldn't want other people to go through. And yeah, one like of that, them, that jump roping thing was real. Oh, the, yeah, the, the breaking of the tooth. Half of my... Um, right? Yeah, half of my left incisor, which is like the buck tooth. It's actually yeah. synthetic. I got hit in my mouth with a jump rope. And I That's think it was horrible. fourth grade. Whiplash, like across the room. And it hit me right in my mouth. And it just chipped my tooth. And That is horrible, man. But let, 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 let's go to something that really, really, really hit you hard. And... I actually have a connection with him as well. And I know you did a lot of stuff for, for the foundation. It is Devin Rubenstein. You know, you, you lost one of your close, close, close best friends, yeah. uh, Devin, to suicide. And I really wanted to make sure that I allocate a portion of this opportunity that I have with you to have some real talk um, to address that. Um, because w one, one of the things that it, it really bothers me is how many young people they go through so much mental anguish. And as a result of that mental anguish, some the situation is so bad where like Devin, they take their life. <clears throat> and um, if it's possible for you to really share, uh, first of all, the friendship, first of all, talk about Devin and you know the personality. I could talk to him as a, as a boss that I had for a little while, but you knew him much better. And so first I would love for you to just kind of say a few words about Devin. And then also, um, if you have any kind of advice for other people that are going through similar things that Devin was going through, and hopefully this, this little segment that we do is able to positively uh, you know, affect somebody that might be going through a really tough time. Damn, uh, that was a lot. I feel like there's a lot of pointers I need to like kind of- uh, It's all uh, yours, man. This yeah, is what to, it's more all about. To touch up on. The- yeah, so yes, my my friend, my very close friend Devin Rubenstein, he uh, he he did commit suicide on November uh, November thirteenth, and this was actually a few years ago. And you called me that night, but go ahead, yeah, I did. Yeah, I mean, there was just such a weird day. I mean, it's a very surreal experience, you know, being around it. Um, the at the during that time, I you did read in my, in my in the bio in that segment that says I have attempted and lost. That's true. I I also have made an attempt on my own life um, back when I was sixteen years old, and so this I've already had my experience of like you know the, the dipples and dabbles of of experimenting with with the with that dark side before this happens. So. Uh, him and I, we had an interesting relationship, and 
it it really so he was he was two uh, yeah he was a year older than me uh, in the you know school system and we started out as like as friend as friends through sneaker collection you know I was a big sneaker collector I'm still very big into shoes and such like that and he was just like always the homie in the in the school that you know we always like spoke on the message boards on on Facebook. Oh, what shoes are you gonna get next? Like all the like sending links back and forth, um, and then like we were just kind of like me and like, him and a couple other guys like we were just kind of known around the school for being like the shoe shoe guys, you know. And that's just like how our our bond began. We spent some some time out of school, and it was just like a very very cool relationship. But I mean his um, his demeanor. And his approach to life and his personality is like really what kept things exciting. Devin was, was definitely one of those guys that believed in the, the, you know, not every, like everything in life is temporary. And, you know, this is like, just like live in the moment type right. um, approach to everything. And he just like, he kept everyone on his toes, on their toes. Uh, he himself was on his toes. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing, but. I mean, you also made touching touching on the the mental health uh, and how it leads to there. Nobody really knows how you get there. Everybody's story is different, um, but it's not just one thing. You know, it's like it's a catalyst system. It's like a it's a tier system. You know, there's mm -hmm. layers to the pain that you get to a point where you're like, okay, you feel like you have no other option. You have no choice. Um, uh, it's different for, for everyone, uh, and at all ages, when I reflect on my situation now, I think, wow, what a dumbass, you know, like you, you were so young, you still are so young right now speaking of, on it, but even then, like you, you really thought that that was your life and that was it. Come on. Um, even, I, even thinking about Devin, you know, when he did it, he was, I think 20, 21 years old. Um, so he was still very young and still, still had so much life in him, but, you know, he had so, so much other stuff hitting him, you know, and different angles. I, he, I feel like he had so many things hitting him that it was just difficult for, for him to really communicate with himself and anybody else. Let me ask you this one, because I really want someone to walk away with this, hopefully preventing a suicide either for themselves or for somebody else. Were there warning signs? that people around him, especially close people, could have looked out for? And two, what, what advice do you have in general for anybody who's going through really, 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 really difficult times? I mean, you touched on your own battle with this stuff, you know, like, um, touch on that, man. Yeah, well, I mean, the, there are different signs. I don't, want to, I don't want to get into, like, what warning signs were because, you know, what is that going to do right now? But... Uh, yeah, there are definitely warning signs. You just be aware of it. Uh, it. It starts out with like as simple as your appetite, you know, in the person that's sitting in the chair. You know, you don't want to eat, you know, just things don't taste good anymore. Um, and then like you start uh, isolating yourself from your friends, from your family, communication goes goes low. And then like you just, just like something else just takes over, you know. Um, but you know, it's it sounds so cliche, but that whole like time heals all thing mm -hmm. is super real. But it, there just needs to be something found that's productive with that time. You know, it, you can't just like sit around and wait for the clock to tick and be like, oh wow, like five minutes went by, I'm not feeling better. You know, it's not going to work like that. You need to do something with what you're feeling in that pain to to really uh, not only extinguish it, but to create something out of it or to make something out of it or to fuel another thing uh, or yourself with it. I, I truly believe that uh, the pain that we feel in life is our greatest teacher, whether it's physical pain in our big toe or, you know, the pain that we feel in the bottom of our stomach or the aching heart that, you know, we have. Um, you're never going to find a better teacher to you know, walk you through a lesson or to choose, to tell you or to show you what you can handle. And uh, from then on, it's just like a matter of your, your actions uh, and how you go about that, what you're going to do to 
to um, to work with it or to mend it or to teach I others. I appreciate that, man. I mean, um, it's it's just so sad that I see so many people that are going through an incredibly difficult um, time. And so for you to kind of share that insight, um, it's it really is a lot. Um, Brandon, are we on? Sorry about that. That's, 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 that. See, that's what happens when live shit happens. Sorry, I just got we got a message over here, and and um, that was weird. Okay, um, so actually, what I would love to do actually right now is go to um, see. Like, here's the problem with wanting to go over your bio, Parsa. You you uh, do not just artistic work as far as painting, but you do uh, sneaker stuff. You do clothing stuff. I mean, this is like one of your samples. You do sweaters. You're wearing one of your stuff right there. You do music. You do. Um, you do video. You did an eight millimeter film when you can't we call it music yet. It's not music yet. Oh, it's okay. just well, experimentation I'm, I'm with sounds and frequency, but we're working on it. We're That's your humility it. right there. Okay, sure. We're working on uh, it. And one of the best memories that I have with you was I think it was for your 21st birthday when we went to Armenia. No, that was Colombia. Uh, but I think it was few, 2018. I think it was Armenia. We went and had a good time. And I was hosting yeah. the Modern Talking show. Shout out to my friend Vahe. And uh, you know, I, I kind of encourage you to have the, you had this eight millimeter camera. I was like, come over here, let's document it. It'll be so cool. And so right now I want to show everybody that highlight that you created. And this, this highlight was really impressive is the fact that it was pretty much all like one shot because the way the eight millimeter works is that, you know, you go, you can't go back and edit it. So you had a couple rolls of film and it was just straight shot and you just shot, shot like a sniper. And the end result, was this piece right over here. So this is Armenia 2018 March uh, Modern Talking Concert in front of 8,000 people. It was incredible. So let's go. So that was a very cool clip. Um, Parsa, tell us a little bit about this whole process of how you kind of played around with the eight millimeter camera and this type of footage you took. Uh, so the eight millimeter camera, that's a, it's a fun one. Um, it's film. So it's different than your, than your digital format. Uh, what's special about it, I mean, I, I, I truly love it, not only because of how, um, how it feels after and how your your subjects and how your environment looks like after you're done shooting it and developing it. But what I really like about the process is how it really tests your your memory and your ability to pull uh, a story together 
you know, with a digital camera or something like that, you're able to go back to your your memory unit and see what what you've captured. You know, you can see a bunch of things, a bunch of clips, and you you choose from that. You dip and dabble, and you create something. But with a film camera, I feel like you're forced to really pick and choose what you're capturing, and that is really special on the person behind the camera. Uh, and that's something that's an internal thing. Like you just know there is a knowing in it, you know, in whether you're painting something or making the video, there's a knowing that, all right, this is the moment right now. I need to capture this and let go. Right. Yeah. And throughout that whole video was just a series of that, you know, not like that video that you, you just watched. There was no, um, like splicing or relocating of clips within that. Sure. We edited some colors. Right. But like there was no like let's edit this and let's just take like a pool of footage and let's compile a video from that. There was none of that. It was all yeah. I mean like like literally I done. I compare it to as a sniper where like you're like waiting yeah, for that. your subject to kind of come on and then you capture that and that's it. You know it's, it's it's pretty incredible stuff that it's almost like a little bit of foresight. So it's pretty cool. But so so you do you do some film. You've done. You've even write, written like uh, you know scripts and screenplays and uh, like I said, from paintings. There's even like a wide range of type of paintings that you've done. You've done like a cookbook. Um, you've been working with Asher Roth. You know, you've you've had pieces that's created that even um, oh my God, Steve Aoki has 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 gotten and he's worn it and he tagged you. Yep. Uh, you you cook. I mean, the the you 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 draw on shoes. You draw on clothes. I mean, there's so many different things that you do. Is there one thing that you'd be willing to give up every other type of medium to continue to do to express the way that you love and appreciate art? Yeah, and no, I'd give up the clothing. But the, and then, but there's yeah. still left like seven other things. Yeah, it, of course. But I mean, yeah. But you're asking me like, w would I give up a medium? Like which medium? No, I no. Like, what, what is like? Would, what would you get rid of everything else and just keep one thing to do? Like it's it's like the one thing that they, they that you will not let anyone take away from you. Oh, um, the invert of what you were thinking. Probably the painting. Probably and why painting. is that? It doesn't require much else other than myself and a tool and a surface. Um, you know, so it's just like that. You know, when, if I have those basic necessities, I can create something. Um, so in the, in the in the background, we're going to start. It can even be ketchup. Somewhere. It can be ketchup and like a French fry, and it, it'll dry. You know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the background, we're going to be playing some of your art pieces. Um, yeah. But tell us more about. So, so is it because of the fact that it's so easily accessible? Is it because like you always start off on a clean slate and it's like a new story every time, and like you don't need you know you don't need anybody or anything besides your mind to be able to start? Well, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, well, like when you ask when you ask me, like they can't take. Well, what's the one thing that they can't take away? Is that you know, like they can't take that from me unless they take the mind from you, you mm -hmm. know, but, you know, to make the films, to make, to like make projects like that, like you need like equipment, you need stuff like that, you need subjects, like all these different things. Uh, the clothing, it takes a little bit more production. Um, but I, I mean, I, I just feel like the, they can't take the painting, the physical painting from you. So, so as an artist, um, there's pros and cons, you know, like obviously you are your own decision maker and, um, you know, you call the shots and um, what comes in money wise, you know, it is what it is. Like you, you, you. There, there's a lot of stuff that is just all on you. And that's a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. My question to you is, um, do you see yourself as a, an artist that wants to have a team around to kind of build and grow? Or do you prefer to just be completely solo and not be reliant on anybody doing anything else. No, definitely a team is super important. Um, there's actually a, uh, a philosopher, his name is Napoleon Hill, and he has this like ideology, it's called a mastermind group, uh, which I mean, you can see in so many different industries and, uh, and you know, establishments that there's there's more than just one person making something happen. You know, sure, like maybe one person or a couple people can be the face of something or an image of something, but there's a team that's making that thing 
you know, run. And every person in that team has a role or um, has some sort of contribution or network or pool or something that the other person, um, you know, can strengthen with or build upon. And it's a, it's a team effort. Mm. And within that, there was like umbrella brands and like uh, different side projects and like different artists and like all these different things, you know, it's, it's very important. So you like the collaborative um, I think that's, aspect? Yeah, no, you have to do it. Um, it's really important. But I, I always felt like, I always feel like I'm a solo worker. But it is very important to have. And uh, but it's just one of those things that you can't force. You know, like, you can't, be like, you can't, you can't be like, all right, I want like I want like this. I want that. Like the the I feel like that synergy of the group, it kind of comes together naturally. It's not something that like you can go on like I don't know like um, uh, a job hunt for and search for you know see resumes and be like all right this is the guy or this is the girl. Um, I feel like it doesn't work like that, especially in this line of work. Like you need to have like some sort of um, creative and spiritual understanding, backing, and um motivation and support all around you know how old were you when you officially became like a full-time artist and you're like all right well this it's just me myself and i and whatever is going to be out of this life it's just going to be all on me what how old were you um it was i think like 18 17 18. all right so let's say there's a 17 18 year old out there in the world right now that is watching this that has been on the fence and um, you know, dealing with the same family issues, same financial issues, meaning like there's all these challenges that a 17, 18 year old has to do. Should I go to college? Should I go do this? Should I do that? There's my parents are this, my parents are that. What advice do you have for that 17, 18 year old? Um, now that you have six, seven years under your belt going down yeah. this road, trust what is the one thing that you can kind of advise them? Trust your own intuition, you know, trust, like trust that inner feeling that you have because that feeling will guide you. If you're not feeling something, don't do it. It's not for you. If you're feeling it, jump in, you know? Always like remember why you're doing it or like always hold the vision and trust the process. Uh, and you know, just don't, don't conform. So, I, so obviously as a, as a family member, I also know that, you know, a lot of what you've been doing as an artist was because you've had a supportive family around. So how, how has that been something that, um, that has influenced you for good or for bad um, while you've been on this process of an, of an artist? Oh, it's, yeah, I mean, it's been a huge, huge support. Uh, I mean, you, I've, hear, I've heard it in, in a couple of your other previous interviews talking about this whole um, the whole Iranian American and just even Iranian um, system of you know being grown up and the standard of, of living and uh, careers and such. So you know, you know choosing this route was was different and it was a different alternative. Um, and it took some time to you know kind of show that all right maybe this can be something. Um, but I you know I I stuck to it. What do you recommend for the parents that um, are, are what? No, I was also going to say that, I mean, without, I feel like without having the support that my parents gave me, even just the peace of mind that I can transform the, the, the basement of our home back in Maryland into my yeah. entire studio and stuff like that, go ahead, get some paint on the floor, like all these things, like they, they fueled that door, you know, and actually... It's funny, I don't know if you even knew this, but the painting behind you is is quite a story. You know, you so that painting is something I made when I was that age, you know, that around that 17, 18 Oh wow. Old. Yeah. Um actually no, I think I made that yeah, no, that was then. That was then. Yeah, it's been three, four years at least, five, six years maybe. Yeah. No, that was then, yeah. So you see on the side of the painting over there, there is an A, B, and C, a couple doors left. Look to your left over there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So those are doors, and those are options that I had. And this figure in the middle of the painting is actually kind of my style. Wow, C going to Miami. Yeah, so let me break it down. Let me break it down to you. So option door A 
which this is actually make a lot of sense for people who have like seen this painting behind Iman all these days. Uh, door A over there was to you know go downwards and quote unquote downwards. Uh, continue the college route. You know, go to go to school. And at this time, I was very near getting my associate's degree uh, back in Maryland, not University of Maryland, State of Maryland. Um, yeah. And that was that option. Continue the college route. Option B, which is that road looking figure heading up north, and that's actually heading up to a, uh, a city skyline of Philadelphia that I had an opportunity up there to go work with a, a very talented clothing designer uh, named Bella Shehu. Yeah. And option C, which you see over there, was to take 95 South. And if you follow the arrows on the other side of the figure, you'll see you know, the, sun, the sunset, the palm tree, and all that stuff. So wow. those were the options. Just continue college, go up north to Philadelphia, uh, and option C was to take 95 South and go to Miami. Uh, I ended up going. I uh, ended up going to Philadelphia, so I ended up doing that route. And oh, you took a detour. <laughs> I took a detour. I took a detour. Uh, but I. It's funny because I ended up doing both B. And C. I'm at C right now. I'm in Florida yeah. right now. Right. So this this is like a it's a artistic bio of yours right here, or at least yeah, some man. type of blueprint that you used. Um, you know, as you as you kind of went up your career route. Definitely. Um, so what we want to do next is like one of my favorite parts of a segment, and that is rapid fire. Mm. So we're gonna we're gonna do a little uh, promo. We'll see if Brandon wants to play a promo or just go straight to rapid fire. And so if Brandon can let me know, we'll let's go to promo. So we'll take a little one minute break, stick around as we do rapid fire with Parsa Afshar Javan, AKA Parsino. Should I go on, on my IG? Hold on. We're back, ladies and gentlemen, with my nephew, Parsa Afshar Javan. Parsino is his name on Instagram. Check him out. Uh, Parsa, welcome to the game of rapid fire, my friend. There's just one quick rule, and that is that you have five seconds to answer the question. If you uh, diddle daddle too long, we're going straight to the next one because you can't handle the heat. Ready? I can handle the heat. Let's do it. What's the last song you downloaded? Oh, damn. I, it was a foreign song, so I don't even, I can't even recall it. Foreign song, really? Yeah. This is what it gets a great time to give a shout out to Asher, man. T tell, tell people what you've been doing for Asher and tell them about what he's doing. He's doing some great stuff, you know? It is. Yeah, of course. Actually, um, Asher Roth, a, a good friend of mine, he... He's actually releasing an album very soon at the end of the month. It's called Flowers on the Weekend. And him and I, we worked together to do the, the art direction for. Yeah. And it's a great project. Total different vibe and understanding of what most people would know and understand of his music. See, I have one of the, have one of the, the original paintings oh, nice. over here. It's called Flowers on the Weekend? Flowers on the Weekend. That's the name of his album? Yep. Very cool. It is, it is. Your favorite word? 
I don't have one. I'm sorry. Right, how about how about your favorite curse word? <laughs> ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Do you care about legacy? Um, not so much, honestly. Favorite boy band and do not lie. Favorite boy band, uh, the Handsome Family. Oh yeah, <laughs> Mbop. Did it? Did it? Mbop. That's the only song that I fucking know. Uh, biggest pet peeve. Oh, when people touch my food. <laughs> yeah, man, I don't like that. Like, and that sucks because you make some great food too. Yeah, no, but like when somebody touches something that's like in my plate or my vicinity. Yeah, me too. You know, I don't like that. That and like like reaching over and then also like taking a sip out of my drink and shit. It's like, come on, man. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, definitely. Uh, that. Favorite cartoon? Ooh, my favorite cartoon. I think Space Jam. It that definitely <laughs> that definitely works. It's a cartoon. Man, one of the best the memories that I have of you and Dorsa is a few months ago when we were hunkered down and randomly we decided to watch. You guys decided to watch Space Jam, and the best part was when Dorsa was literally line by line saying all this stuff and then right. you guys reconfirmed about how to the, the fact that you guys watch this thing like ladies a thousand times. and gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> um what's your what's your life motto oh mm. i haven't found it yet I haven't lived enough motto okay like, okay 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 um I'm gonna go with my last question, and that is, do you own plants? I do. <laughs> if you were to name a plant a name, what would you name it? I would name my plant Valerie. Valerie, I would name cute. my plant Valerie. <laughs> All right. A little well, stinky if, one. If, if, you ever, <laughs> if you ever happen to have a plant named Valerie, send her my regards, please, you know? <laughs> I will, I will. Um, so, so Pars, you know, we touched on a lot of different things and I do want to kind of let you know that, um, you are genuinely one of the most unique, uh, human beings that I know in the entire universe. And I'm, I'm very grateful for you being in my life because you bring a lot of joy. You bring a lot of, um, uniqueness. Uh, you bring a lot of zest into life. Um, I do know that you're a very thought provoking and intellectual, always wanting to be profound. I want to give the last few minutes of this awesome segment that I have with an awesome person for you to share whatever it is that's important to you, whatever it is that's near and dear for you, whatever it is, uh, any kind of message that you have either for the youth or the old or humans. Uh, Cause I know you have a lot in your heart. You have a lot in your head. And now that you've been on this earth for 23 plus years, um, share what it is that you've always wanted to share. If anything. <laughs> no, I'd say that this is only temporary. So that is your Oh no. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, Nelly. Oh, that beautiful hair is going. I swear to God, I didn't know this. <laughs> Don't do the whole thing, man. Don't do the whole thing. <laughs> and make sure you don't cut off your ear pods. <laughs> <laughs> nah. No, it's time for something new. I love it, man. Hey, whatever you do, man, it's a beautiful face. And more importantly, it's a beautiful mind and a beautiful heart, man. So whatever you do with your hair, it's going to look great. I really appreciate you coming and having this, uh, this uh, authentic chit chat with you, man. And I can't wait to see all the greatness that you're going to accomplish. Whatever it is that you want to do, you will do. It's just a matter of time. So of course. thanks, man. Appreciate you being on Awesome People. Much love to you. And uh, for apologies for any technical difficulties to anybody out there. But this final product is going to be badass. So be safe, be healthy, take care of each other. Be kind, loving, and respectful. Much love. Peace. <laughs> Need some space? Introducing the Space Stick. Perfectly crafted to keep you exactly six feet away from others. Your order will also include the body grip to free up your hands to enjoy that OJ. Order now for just $9.99. All jokes aside, now more than ever, you need to be mindful of your health, look out for your loved ones, and take social distancing seriously like we are right now. 
With your free time, we encourage you to invest in yourself personally and professionally. And that's what we're here for. As experienced business, branding, and video content specialists, we want to help you create a strong foundation to withstand the storm. And since we're all in this together, we want to offer you a free coaching session. We would love to help everyone, but unfortunately with limited bandwidth, we're only able to select a few businesses. So click on the link below and in our bio for more information and to apply now. Let's unite and conquer. conquer.